Hand hygiene is one of the simplest yet most powerful tools we have to prevent communicable diseases. In this video, we'll take a quick look at why it matters, how it works, and when to use them. Our hands play a key role in the spread of communicable diseases. Through contact with infected people, animals, or contaminated surfaces, hands can easily pick up harmful pathogens, then transfer them to the person, to others, or back into the environment. That's where hand hygiene comes in. It includes any action that cleans the hands to remove or inactivate these pathogens. By interrupting this chain of transmission, hand hygiene remains one of the simplest and most effective ways to prevent the spread of communicable diseases. Hand washing has been practiced for centuries as part of cultural and religious traditions. It was the mid-19th century that Hungarian physician Ignis Semmelweis provided one of the earliest clinical evidence that handwashing could save lives. Since then, numerous studies have confirmed the critical role of hand hygiene in preventing healthcare-associated infections and in reducing both illness and death. However, despite this strong evidence, hand hygiene compliance among healthcare workers around the world remains far from ideal. Let's take a closer look at hand hygiene. Hand hygiene can be done by physically removing pathogens from the hands, chemically inactivating them, or both. This can be achieved through a variety of methods, and in this video, we'll focus on hand washing with soap and water and using an alcohol-based hand rub. The way they work is quite fascinating. Let's take a closer look. Washing with water alone can remove some substances, especially those that are water-soluble or loosely attached to the skin. But contaminants like oil, grease, and the lipid membranes of certain pathogens are hydrophobic or water-fearing and don't wash away easily. That's where soap comes in. The key to the effectiveness of soap is its molecular structure. Soap molecules are amphiphilic. They have two different ends. One end is hydrophilic or water-loving while the other is hydrophobic or water-fearing. The hydrophobic tail binds to oils, fats, and the lipid layers of some microorganisms. When mixed with water, soap molecules group together into structures called micelles. The water-loving heads face outward, while the water-fearing tails tuck inward, trapping oil, grease, and pathogens inside. In addition to this, soap can also disrupt the lipid membranes of some pathogens leading to their structural breakdown and inactivation. The mechanical action of rubbing hands together during washing generates friction that physically dislodges any microorganisms, dirt, organic material, and dead skin cells. The water then washes away the micelles and other contaminants. It's simple science, but remarkably effective. Proper hand drying, such as with a clean single-use towel, is important to prevent recontamination and maintain skin integrity. Let's have a look at alcohol-based hand rubs. Solutions with 60 to 95% alcohol are most effective. They work by denaturing microbial proteins and disrupting lipid membranes. This results in the inactivation or death of pathogens. Although alcohol-based hand rubs are highly effective and convenient for routine hand hygiene, they have some limitations. They have limited or no effect on some pathogens. For example, bacterial spores such as Clostridium difficile, protozoan oocysts such as those of Cryptosporidium, and some non-enveloped viruses such as norovirus. They're also not suitable when hands are visibly dirty, in which case soap and water are more appropriate. The World Health Organization provides guidance on the correct procedure for hand hygiene using both soap and water and alcohol-based hand rubs, particularly in healthcare settings. For either method to be effective, it must be applied to all surfaces of the hands and used for the recommended duration. Each technique follows specific steps to ensure thorough coverage and optimal effectiveness. The recommended time for hand washing with soap and water is 40 to 60 seconds and 20 to 30 seconds when using an alcohol-based hand rub. Wearing gloves does not replace the need for hand hygiene as hands can become contaminated during glove removal or if gloves are damaged or used incorrectly. Hand care is important with frequent hand hygiene. This includes actions such as selecting products that are safe for the skin, avoiding practices that increase irritation, such as wearing gloves on damp hands, 
and the regular use of moisturizers. Several other antiseptic compounds are used in hand hygiene, such as chlorhexidine, iodine-based solutions, quaternary ammonium compounds, and triclosan. There are also other hand hygiene methods, such as antiseptic hand washing, which involves washing with soap or detergent containing an antiseptic agent, and surgical hand antisepsis, a more rigorous process performed by surgical staff before procedures. These antiseptic agents and methods are generally used in situations with a higher risk of infection. So, when should hand hygiene be performed? In public settings, hand hygiene should be practiced after any activity that may expose hands to pathogens or risk transmitting them. For example, this includes after using the toilet, touching shared surfaces, preparing food, caring for the sick, handling animals or their products, coughing or sneezing, and before eating. In healthcare settings, the World Health Organization recommends performing hand hygiene at five key moments. These are before touching a patient, before clean or aseptic procedures, after exposure risk to body fluids, after touching a patient, and after touching patient surroundings. And that's a quick look at hand hygiene, an important public health measure that remains one of the most effective tools for preventing the spread of communicable diseases. We've had a look at why it's important, how it works, and when to do it. For more information, have a look at the resources below.